Lomo photography effects are really quite special in the world of photography. They've got a very, very unique look. And uh, in Photoshop, we can create this, and it's nice to have a look to see what this looks like first before we get there. Now, this type of image, it's got the signature marks of a Lomo-style photo. For those of you who don't know, Lomo is a Russian camera brand. It was the Lomo Compact. It just has a single flat lens, and it was just point and shoot, point and shoot, and was very popular during the late period of the Soviet era, but has regained a lease of life in the uh, 21st century. It's become insanely popular for producing these very stylized images. The signature marks of it are this shadowy vignette around the side, these flat yet very poppy colours, which don't really match with reality because of a thing called cross-processing, which creates a very particular style of colour that you get from these Lomo produced images. I've got a, a cross-processing tutorial also here at the Tutorial Bucket site which you can have a look at if you want to see that in some detail. Now the process for creating this style of image we need first of all to add in a curves layer so that we can get the colours right. Now I'll just drag over my layers palette here so you can see this being done and I'll add in an adjustment layer for curves. Now from the curves adjustments, we need to now do a couple of very special things. Normally when we fool around with curves, we tend mostly just to play around in the RGB department, but this time we're going to play around in the actual colour channels. So I'll go into the red channel first, and I'll make the first adjustment for the colour channel Lomo effect, where I'm going to change the way colour behaves inside of this image by rebalancing and recalibrating the three different colour channels. Now this is to copy up a process that was manually done by processing film stock, usually sl slide film stock, with chemicals that were not meant for slide film stock and it produced all these weird colour shifts. Now these settings that I'm using here, these are just a very rough guide. Have a look at that cross-processing tutorial if you want to see it in some detail, but you can just use this as a rough guide and you'll get results that you like. I, I really hope you will anyway. Okay, red's done. Go to blue. I'm not doing the green. I do the green last because the green channel we tend to use for highlights. The blue channel, very simple. Just pull it up like this. Should be good. Green channel, finally. Make my adjustments here. I'm going to nudge this one down just, just a tiny little bit and nudge this one up just a tiny little bit. Very, very soft S-curve we get from it. And that will do. That gives us that characteristic cross-process colour look. As you can see, the skin tones go very flat but very poppy. You can fine-tune this, of course, particularly in the red and green channels. If you don't like the effect, just fiddle around with this until you get the sort of colour pop that you need for the skin. I'm quite happy with it about there, though, I think. Okay. It's the first part done, and that's actually the hardest part, is getting those curves set up in the channels so it looks right. Now the next part that we need for this is to create that characteristic vignette effect, that shadowy effect around the edge. Now to do this, we need to make a copy of this finished image. To do this, we need to make a stamp. If you're using a PC, the keyboard shortcut for doing this is Control, Shift, Alt and the letter E. That gives you a stamped copy of the entire thing. If you're using a Mac, that will be Command, Shift, Option, E, and that will produce the same result. Okay, we've now got our stamped version. Next tool we use is to create that vignette effect. You'll find under the filter menu. This tool is under the distort selection, and it's called Lens Correction. Now the lens correction box is quite big, as you can see I can't fit it all into my camera window here, but I'll show you as much as I can. It has a grid, which is really quite annoying, so we can turn that off under the show grid. So kill that off so you can see what you're doing. And the thing that we really want to control here, just drag this in so you can see it very clearly, is this thing. It's called vignette. Now the amount for the vignette, I'm going to be quite extreme in this. I'm going to really pull this in make it as much vignette as it can give me and that will shadow up the corners of the image very typical for Lomo. The midpoint if you want to fine tune you can make it really quite extreme but I'm quite happy to keep it somewhere around about 
its original starting point or maybe just a little bit pulled in judge this on the image to see on what you want how you want that to look and that's just about it for the vignette we say okay now if that's not enough for you uh, you can darken up that vignette a little bit more by running that lens correction filter a second time and it will reapply it so you can increase the amount of vignette if you don't like the effect that you've got so far I'm happy with this just one more thing I want to do which is very typical for Lomo style pictures is the fact that they are not pin sharp they are nearly always blurry or a little bit diffuse they have a dreamlike quality to the focus on them so I'm going to blur this a little bit you can use Gaussian blur if you don't have a newer version of Photoshop but if you do have something that's from CS2 and above I'd suggest you go to the distort menu oh, I'm sorry to the blur menu and choose lens blur lens blur gives you a slightly more complete palette of tools to play with for getting a blur effect now the main thing you want to use on this is this thing called blur focal distance and this is going to depend on the resolution of your image and a few other factors so just drag up the blur focal distance we'll give it a chance to run its preview until you find a blur effect that's suitable for your job now I'm using a setting here of about 75 because as I say, they're not pin sharp, but they're also not wildly out of focus either. They're just a little bit soft. So I'm pretty happy with those settings that I've got on that. And I will say OK to this. And there is the Lomo image complete. There's a lot of different variations to Lomo photography, so don't take this as gospel in the way this is set out. Go and have a look at the Flickr groups on Lomo. There are lots of websites about Lomo photography, and there's some brilliant images that you can use as inspiration for creating your own Lomo-style effects. Get out there and do it, folks.